first take. Ah, hello, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not read this comic before, please, please do. Uh, I'll have it in the description down below. Anyways, this will be loosely based off of it. Uh, I am giving you this as a reminder of that. Now, let us begin. Our story begins with a stormtrooper named Glitch. His squadron, uh, led by a uh, Jedi Knight, descend onto a uh, temple which holds a dark root uh, artifact on the planet of Mandalore. They enter the artifact's domain, um, causing the Jedi all sorts of discomfort as she instantly senses the dark uh, uh, force and uh, just uh, energy coming from the artifact. It doesn't affect any of the troopers, however. She regrets walking in as it instantly shocks her just a little bit, uh, forcing her her side to shift just a second, even for just a second. However, the, the troopers worry for her, as she's not able to defend them from an iron golem that is immediately activated. This um, golem, standing above two, 20 feet tall, uh, was able to block all blaster bolts. Um, until, well, Glitch put up his hand, mimicking what that of a uh, force controller, uh, responding with most of his people, well, laughing at him. Uh, that, but this gives the idea for the Jedi to use her force and defeats the uh, golem with a huge explosion coming from it and other traps sort of activating stuff like that. Once all the traps are defeated, his squadron um, lures in closer as the Jedi um, talks a lot about the dark force and energy that she feels of it. Uh, Glitch listens in closely as he really does want to learn more about Jedis and just different force stuff he's sort of a geek just like us um as they hit a wall one that could be only opened by a jedi she senses the right keyhole and then push um puts her lightsaber inside of it uh, opening up to farther into the dungeon or artifacts with domain however the dark energy is even stronger here causing her even more distress she says that she cannot go any further as this hurts her too much. The squadron starts to walk in as he doesn't feel right about this. Glitch turns around saying that, you know, she should she should still come, you know, like there there's no other reason it, like it, it's bad to split up the squadron. However, then three shots are fired right past his face, hitting one of his um squadron uh vice leader uh, who's immediately hit straight to the floor. Uh, one other shot is fired straight at him as he ducks down below trying to regain his weapon after it had been thrown. However, is shot at multiple times after that. Um, he sort of runs deeper and deeper in the temple as the Jedi Knight struggles to defend the squadron. They are slowly picked off until he is the final one with the Jedi Knight dying in front of him. He picks up her sword, um, her lightsaber, Swinging it around wildly, um, trying to defend himself. After he comes out of the shadows, trying to sneak attack one of the Death Squadron that he now realizes their armor, uh, with their leader, uh, I forget his name, whoever the leader at this time would be. Um, however, it is swiftly blocked by the leader with the dark saber uh, in his hand. He laughs at him, saying, huh, "Now that's something new." Yeah, you don't see this every day. As then he, he just like basically un unsheathes him from the from the sword as it starts to fly in the air. He takes out his gun shooting at, at the rest of the squadron, gaining distance as he jumps for the for the saber, barely catching onto it and rolling straight and hitting his head against the trap mechanism that had uh, the keyholes in it for the lightsaber. The dark saber wielder is already upon him as he's almost 10 feet away from him readying up one last strike to just kill him. As he says, well this has been a fun uh, cat and mouse game, however it is start, it is the time to end this. He readies up a overhead strike, um, however Glitch gets the idea and puts the uh, saber into the, into the wrong keyhole on purpose. 
a, a gigantic explosion is heard from inside of the temple as and right below them the ground explodes revealing in the cavern uh you know just a gigantic cavern as everybody's starting to float he tries his best however he's not able to recover by himself as the ground just crumbles away from his hand he misses the uh, um the, um the artifact as the others start to use their grappling hooks he was never equipped with one however he's seeing no other way out he looks deep within inside himself and tries so hard he needs to hope he needs to believe that he can do this he has something inside of him that's worth well being saved and with that hope he activates his force powers levitating himself in the air stopping himself for just a mo small moment as he says yes and in his excitement he lets go and falls down to the ground however he only fell into the ravine with water covering his shoes now he has to stop around with uh, muddy shoes however that's much better than dying of a falling death he slowly climbs his way up using uh force to try to uh, uh self augmentate uh, as he had saw uh the jedi once use however in a botched version of this his hands just crumble straight to the wall too powerful and too light when he tries it otherwise however too light is much better than too powerful he starts to learn that every single part of, you know, living, every single part of climbing, uh, fighting, uh, uh, well, jumping, r running, every single part of it is the force. He can feel it now. He can breathe it. As he starts to breathe it more, it, it starts to gain more energy. He starts to gain more force, um, more control. As he finally makes his um, way to the artifact, however, the dark sword, uh, dark saber user is already there too glitch now able to actually sense the dark user's power um just the da dark force coming from him he d it's not like he actually has the force but just the de the death intent basically coming from him he now also uh, remembers the two you know lightsabers that were um you know just sitting at the bottom of the canyon so uh, from the two deaths of the uh, the Jedi that had just been killed before that he had seen death um, so he hatches a plan as the man uh, as the, the dark user um, comes up above him um, and attempts to kick in his face he jumps up uh, up uh, over his head um, and uses the force to try to pull the uh, lightsabers to his hands he only gains one though as the other one soars straight to his face as it um as it barely misses his face um he lands on his feet and then turns around to face the uh dark user and then his head was actually cut off by the f by the lightsaber that had flown past his face it had cut off uh the mandalorian's head it, he just drops down dead However, the rest of them, uh, the rest of his squadron, the the you know the death squad, are freaked out by this, and there's a sniper that perches on his spot and um, takes aim at him. As you know, he starts to sense even more as he starts to breathe in everything. He senses danger in every single corner of this place. However, he can't even see them. Not even his soldier training would train him for this. He grabs the relic and starts to make his way out of there however one of the death troopers picks up the um the dark saber thinking they could do the same as uh their master however d him not even no remembering you know how to fight with a sword um he just slo sloppily s blocks the attack however um gets the the saber knocked out of his hand uh, unlike him sh uh, one of the death train um, people was made to be the apprentice uh, of the you know the dark user the uh, main guy and she gets a quick stab straight onto his arm however the artifact was actually a a gauntlet like artifact that would equip around his arm and was like a gauntlet as he had equipped it before it had felt like the dark energy that was inside of it had started to control him a little bit 
he had to release it somehow, so he thought maybe she could like destroy it herself, because clearly he was just gonna dump this thing right as he got out. So he blocks this, the, blo the dark saber with it, causing a chain reaction which explodes everything around it, causing a like a seismic, you know, just causing utter destruction inside of the canyon, stopping the sniper from taking a shot, and um, it, the whole canyon starts to basically just crumble. He starts. To, uh, he jumps down into the canyon below, landing in water, um, using his force powers to enhance his, his swimming, and gets out of there lickety-split. He's shot after, however, most of the death squad is trapped inside of there. Just get like combusting and everything starts to crumble as he um swims his way through the uh river and then making it out the other end waking up on the freaking river's beach now the gauntlet on his left hand he uh, he can barely see some sort of power within it as he does the technique that he had before however he has some time to recover after all he finds himself in this valley you know he gets used to his surroundings. This valley, it, it was it was ancient, you know, uh, ancient forest, enchanted with some sort of uh, people, right? People of um, extra mental power that, well, he could not tell just yet. Maybe they would know about this artifact. He would live out the rest, uh, the next few, well, years, well, f becoming acquainted with the residents of this ancient forest under Mandalore. This ancient forest was home to the uh, Asari, which are a sort of Aryan race of, uh, I, I, what was it called? It was like slug people, I think, but they, they look more like Piccolo. <laughs> I'm a DBZ fan, sorry, but they, they look more like Piccolo than actual slugs, but they do shoot slime out of their, their mouth, toxic slime, acid slime, and hot slime. So, you know, like, they're pretty, they're, they're like warrior-based people, and uh, he starts to learn their language. Um, using the Force, it actually helps him a little bit, and he, he starts to learn that everything has the force inside of it you know like every single part of it and breathing even as he starts to breathe um with the force much better now after meditating and calming his mind once more with these people he starts to learn more about this this artifact he should have dumped it in the river once he saw it the dark energy starts to hurt more and more and more that he uh it it, it stays around him he throws it in the river, you know, thinking that he, he'll just get rid of it after this. He makes his way back to the village as he start as he, uh, you know, he wants to test himself with the, with the self augmentation of, you know, uh, force. He starts to, uh, appreciate their culture even more now because he loves fighting. Uh, not loves as in he'll fight anybody anytime, but it helps him test this new force and he he's geeking out over using the force i mean he's jumping over his opponents you know using that soldier training to his ability uh there are no guns though so that's that's a shame but he learns hand-to-hand -hand combat very well uh very fast and how to fight with a sword through these tournaments over the next uh, two years yeah i think it was two years uh he fights with them and then finally beats the slug champion so uh a slug that is at the height of over 15 feet and a wider than an elephant. This slug wielded a glaive, which it would slam consecutively on the ground. Uh, however, you know, him being the protag, you know, he uses the force to jump on top of the slug's head. As the slug's eyes, um, you know, turn to look at him, he basically just knocks, uh, he blinds both of them using the power of the sun. <laughs> in the palm of his hand basically using like light force to uh, blind the blind the slug uh the slug is blinded and then is promptly defeated after this and it is defeat he finally uh winning this tournament it brought great respect to his name by the slug people he became sort of well the protector of their village until a mysterious 
cloaked man came to their village. One of purple aura. Uh, he could not sense what it exactly was. After all, his own aura, well, he couldn't sense it. Only others could. The, cro the cloaked man was welcomed by the people, however. They seemed to naturally just let him in, even though all he did was wave his hand in front of their eyes. He finally reveals himself to, uh, you know, <laughs> our boy, Glitch, as he says, Trooper 254, it's time for you to come in. And also, you know, give me your report now. As, you know, he stands firm and puts up his hand like he's, like he's gonna give his speech, <laughs> his report. Oh, um, and then, you know, like, that, that function inside of his brain, he remembers that he has, like, a function in his brain that makes him do stuff for, the, for Jedis. He had almost forgot about it in these two years. Um, he hated that feeling, however. It, it felt like disrespect. However, he still gave his report, telling all of this to, uh, to the self-revealed Samuel Jackson playing as, you know, Mace Windu. Um, uh, you know, Mace Windu, uh, you know, trots around him, spinning in a circle as all of the, all of the re residents are like, Oh, what's he gonna do? Are they gonna fight? As they're like, fight, 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 fight. And he's like, shut up. I was able to just uh, control all of you with one force, one, one force, you know, mind control. You're barely even intelligent enough to be sold goods <laughs> or to sell goods. As... You know, Glitch kind of takes this personally. After all, these are these are his people. What are you here for, Mace? He's like, that's that's some real disrespect coming from a soldier. As he says, I'm sorry, Commander or, or Grand Master. I'm. Uh, it's to my knowledge that well, my mission was over. I do not know my way out of here either way. Can I return to my normal life, or do I have to? come back in as you know mace mace is quite this strict person he's like a strict parent if that makes any sense to the soldiers he says no that's not what i'm interested in here for what i'm interested in is the fact that you're able to use the force this startles glitch as he doesn't know how he knows however he says it's so simple though it was clear to me right as I right as I spotted you. Yellow, huh? As he's like, is that my color? Ah, shit! <laughs> Please, I, I just wanted to live a peaceful life. You can back at the Jedi Temple. As you know, uh, he's like, are you sure? Like I can live a normal life? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> of course you can. That's what us Jedi's have always wanted to do. That has always been our life goal. To rule and to make sure that the, the you know, galaxy can live normal lives. And, you know, he's like, fine, I'll, retreat, I'll turn. However, you will not treat me as a soldier. And also get this, you know, like this, uh, do they, did they install chips in their brains? Uh, to command them and stuff. That's what it was. Get this chip out of my head first, so I don't have to listen to any of you. I have the Force, after all. Now I should be respected as a as a fellow Jedi. As you know, uh, Mace Windu snaps and it says, "Don't get ahead of yourself. You just barely even learned how to use the Force. First, you're gonna need some l lessons, and you'll be with the children. And then it tell you you know you get basically like a." a, a like a transition and suddenly he's in the class with the kids learning how to use the force as he's like i already know all this stuff yoda as he's like mm, i shall consult master windu <laughs> you know windu's like yeah i know i just did that to be an ass uh, yoda's like ah an ass you are fine i'll take him i'll take him in as my personal uh you know uh Ah, what would you call it? Apprentice? Oh, shit. Yo, he'd be the... Yeah, okay. He's the apprentice of Mace Windu now. After all, Mace Windu's quite interested in, in this, you know, in this development. He he doesn't get the microchip uh, uninstalled, however. 
and you know that kind of, that kind of creates a distrust between him and Mace Windu and suddenly he starts hearing the clanking sound that classic feeling that he had felt at the temple one night as he's living at the Jedi uh, temple he walks out to the to the uh, reservoirs that are next to the Jedi temple that come on both sides to find what is that in the lake the artifact that he had once put on before to rescue himself from um, certain death he picks it up out of the water as it, the rust off of it. He just basically wipes off the rust with, with his force, uh, sort of cleaning it forcefully under a uh, high, uh, high velocity and high uh, temperature faucet. <sighs> this thing is back here again. What the hell? How is this possible? As then Mace went, walks into his, you know, thing and he's like, Good news! You're my new apprentice. All right, enough excitement. In the next morning, you'll be waking up at 6 a.m. You know, and thank you. Uh, I mean, <sighs> sorry, I'm still on that stuff. Uh, and you know, Glitch is promptly quite scared of what's going to happen. However, he hid the, the gauntlet behind his back very fast. He wants to ask Mace Windu so badly. However, he thinks that it'd actually be better to ask the... the uh, you know like dark energy person which is one of the sith lords he can already sense sith lord energy in this sort of vicinity of his since he doesn't he didn't te te technically b be born as a as a person i mean he still has the chip installed in him, so he sort of has a combination between bewilderment and also knowledge of the force which is a combination that had never been crossed the mind of the dear emperor so yeah he can kind of sense that there's dark energy in this place however he thinks that it's the gauntlet however the gauntlet has since then lost most of its dark energy as you know mace windu would have instantly sensed it if it did uh the dark energy was simply just imaginary for him as he imagined that it was coming from the gauntlets i'm out of time today so i'll see you guys in the next one I'm super excited, and I'll see you tomorrow.